Greetings, mammalians. Welcome to Wall Street Wildlife, the investing podcast that will help you better understand how to make money in the stock market. I'm Christoph Monkey Pikarski. And I'm Luke the Badger Hallard. Hopefully you caught our awesome promo episode, which is going to tell you all about what this new podcast is about. But we're here to share our investing wisdom, 40 years between us of investing wisdom with our listeners. Has it really been that long, Luke? (laughs) (laughs) I've certainly been podcasting for a couple of years. Maybe I snuck onto your feed because maybe you forgot to delete the Telescope Investing podcast and we just pop back up. And if you're a fan of Luke and Albert and the Telescope Investing podcast, well, I'm here with my buddy Christoph the monkey, and we might get Albert on as a special guest in a future week. Maybe you find your way to Wall Street Wildlife because you were fans and longtime listeners of our No Limit podcast for Seven Investing, where we are lead advisors. And we did like a whole year of No Limit. But We want to do something a little bit different with Wall Street Wildlife. And we think that needed like a new podcast, a new platform, new branding, and maybe get to a new audience. Like the no limit, the seven investing stuff, that's for really experienced investors. We really teach you how to find the world's greatest companies. But in this podcast, we want to pursue maybe someone who might consider themselves the investing curious, maybe a less experienced investor, maybe someone who hasn't even become an investor yet or someone who's in the markets, they want to learn more. We want to take really complex finance concepts, interesting companies, and we want to make it real simple. And advanced folks are also welcome because we will be talking about all kinds of strategies, all kinds of styles, and it's not that one size fits all in the investing world. So we've adopted for Wall Street Wildlife our animal avatars. They're kind of lighthearted and fun, I'm the badger. And why am I the badger? Like, I think I'm a big picture thinker. I love a good argument. And I try and be outcome oriented. That's kind of a badger's personality. I'm a long term investor. I try and see what the world needs more of in the next 10, 20 years. And I try and invest in those things today that served me really well over the last 20 years as a professional investor. Christoph, you're calling yourself the monkey. Why are you the monkey? I like jumping around and I'm playful and I like experimenting. I'm curious. And I think after investing for 20 somewhat years in a particular style, I've found my way to new corners of the market jungle. And I want to share all the new things that I'm learning from across the spectrum of investment vehicles and timelines. And so my approach will be a little bit more unorthodox and maybe a little bit riskier, maybe a little bit uh, hanging out in in some underbrush. One way or another, uh, I'll have lots of things to make fun of you for. And I guess with you monkeying around just like that, maybe if you're a long-term investor like me, but you've been thinking about technical trading, looking at macro factors, trying to do some of the more complex stuff, maybe even playing with derivatives. I guess those guys and girls who are listeners are going to learn a lot about that from you, maybe from your uh, successes, but maybe also from your mistakes. I think there's not one correct way to do this. And because we will have contrasting styles at times, we'll also have things that align and places where we agree. So that'll be useful for investors to know. So we, we're we hoping to create a really experimental, fun environment for people to take seriously what we say about investments and companies and vehicles and reasoning, but at the same time, have fun learning how it's actually done and what the process of learning how to become a really skilled investor looks like. And this is episode one. We haven't quite figured out the format, but we've got some ideas for the kinds of things we're going to bring into future episodes. We want to talk about big market news. We're calling that the watering hole, like what's happening on the street and how does that potentially affect our investments? We've also got Monkey's Jungle Hammock and the Badger's Den, where we'll be thinking about brand new ideas that maybe aren't on everyone's investing radar. You want to tell people about the Owl's Nest? So the Owl's Nest is about 
maybe the hardest thing about investing, which is the emotional and behavioral psychology. Many people don't understand that it's not just about the numbers and the financial statements, but it's about things like being skeptical while being curious, while being independent. How do you foster patience? How do you foster courage when things are going badly? This is a truly, truly important aspect of being an investor. And so we'll try to wake up the owls within you. We've also got a segment we're calling Phoenix or Dodo. We're going to take a look at a company that's currently failing, could be doing a turnaround story, and we're going to see, does it have that Phoenix from the flames potential, or is it like a dead Dodo uh, walking the lion to death? Lucky for us, I have a dodo hat in my repertoire, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not too many dodos in your portfolio. We also plan on having many different kinds of guests. So who knows what kinds of animals and creatures you'll come across. And now the most exciting part of this show that we really couldn't do as part of No Limit is we've got our King of the Jungle portfolio challenge. Now, Christoph and I have opened brokerage accounts on, I've gone on Trading212. This is like the Robin Hood for the UK. It's for the masses. And I think, what are you using in the States? I opened up a SoFi account specifically for this investment challenge. And what did we do, Luke? We infused our account with a cool thousand dollars. And we're going to add another hundred bucks every month. Like, we know these are kind of small numbers, certainly compared to our real money portfolios. We've been doing this stuff for a long time, but we wanted to show, hopefully, how it's possible to build and compound wealth over the long term. That's right. And maybe $1,000 isn't a small amount to you. So the, the whole point being that anybody can invest and should invest, and we're going to teach you how to do it systematically, step by step in the form of this competition where I publicly show Luke how to make way more money than he ever thought possible. <laughs> yeah, your, uh, your monkey style might win. Like we're gonna judge our contest at the end of one year. We're gonna see whose account balance is the highest. And there is a forfeit. I don't know how this is gonna work, but Christoph somehow wants me, if I lose, to show up and serve him dinner in a fancy restaurant dressed in a badger costume. Like, we'll figure that out closer to the time because I think he's going to be monkeying his way over to the UK to feed me dinner. Um, <laughs> but there's a competitive element. But I've got to say up front, right, don't judge us on our results over one year. Who knows where the market's going to go? Like, as a long-term investor, you really look at your results over 10 years, 20 years, but do judge us on our decision-making process. Like, how do we pick companies? What factors do we look at? How do we decide how much to allocate? How do we manage a position? I think there's some learning there, even if we both bomb. That sounds to me, Luke, like a finely prepared concession speech, right? <laughs> right <laughs> on day one. <laughs> and being a realist, this is a tough market to be an investor right now. As you know, buddy, because you've done some pretty dumb things in your personal portfolio. <laughs> eh, mistakes were made. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm here to fight another day. So uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see where this journey takes us. Lots to learn. And from where I'm perched in my jungle hammock right now, Luke, I think these times are about to get really, really interesting. What's happening out there in the world right now? Crossroads of artificial intelligence, global upheavals interest rates, there's a lot to contend with. And uh, I think we'll have a really interesting time trying to make sense of it all and explaining to people why we're picking what we're picking. Yeah, we want to explain our investment rationale. We're going to tell you in these episodes why we're buying the companies we're buying. We're not saying, like, do what we do. We are not financial advisors, but we're just telling you our thought process and how we ended up choosing those companies for our King of the Jungle portfolio. So before we tell you our number one picks for our real money portfolios and get the game started today, let's just headline some of the topics we've got coming up in future episodes. We've got some ideas for some really interesting owl's nest educational topics. Christoph, you found a really interesting article about the seven virtues of great investors, virtues like curiosity and skepticism and courage. 
we're going to pick those up in future episodes and explore why they are critical to being a successful investor. That's right. You can't invest without a little bit of wisdom. And many people get burned badly by even picking correct companies, but then not knowing what to do after they find the company. So learning to think like an owl and really paying attention to the virtues of investing is a big deal. And we won't let that go afoul. A friend of mine who'd recently got hosed in an investment scam. He lost 10,000 pounds of his hard-earned money. That's a big deal. And we'd like to share that story in a future episode. I'm hoping to get him onto the show as an interviewee, kind of tell us the story himself. There's a ton of red flags and things to watch out for. So if you're a newer investor, listen in for that and watch out for the things that might plague your future as you get stuck into the stock market. I think there's a lot of things that scare people from investing and our job primarily will be to talk about all the things that you can do that will help you become wealthy and all kinds of things not to do that would help destroy your wealth. Both are equally important. We've got a couple of interesting companies lined up for future episodes in our Phoenix or Dodo segment. There's one I own personally, Nanox Imaging, ticker NNOX. I honestly don't know if this is a medical revolution, or this is like Theranos part two. We're going to explore that in an upcoming Phoenix or Dodo segment, trying to decide, are they successfully creating a medical device that's going to revolutionize the world? Or are they just stealing investors' money? It's, it's a company I once held in my portfolio as well, but a little bit too scary for me, Luke. I thought you live with fear. It's true, but uh, I also know a dead carcass uh, on the jungle floor when I, <laughs> when I uh, come across one. <laughs> well, I still own this one. I'm not certain it's a dead carcass, but I just don't know. Let's get stuck into it in a future episode. And there's a bunch of other like potential turnaround story companies out there. Companies like Unity. Companies like DocuSign, Teladoc. Hey, if you've got a company you think fits this category of Phoenix or Dodo, give us a tweet, let us know, and we'll stick it on our roster for a bit of analysis. So shall we talk about the, the main event, our King of the Jungle portfolio competition, the reason why we're all here? Have you decided yet what you're going to buy in your portfolio? I did. I did. And uh, well, le let me take a step back and say that we're both starting with $1,000. It's already in the account and we could allocate it however we want in whatever allocations we want at whatever rate we want. My first pick for the King of the Jungle Challenge will be none other than the albatross hanging around my neck for the last eight months of my life, EOS Energy. Oh boy, where to start with this one? They're down something like 60 to 70 percent in my real world portfolio and it feels to me Luke like they are a company that is sandwiched in the most of impossible situations on the one hand the greatest macro tailwinds that maybe I've ever seen in the name of tax reduction credits that will be subsidizing both EOS energy and its customers in order to produce their new Z3 batteries. The tax credits themselves will be worth multiples of their market cap once they get their automated lines running. However, on the other hand, the company right now is selling as though it's going bankrupt despite getting a conditional loan of approval from the Department of Energy. So why is it still rated as a potential bankruptcy? because they need some amount of cash to close this Department of Energy loans. And lo and behold, the capital credit markets as of the last month have really begun to close because of rising interest rates and all kinds of macro worries, plus United States government issues, not having a Speaker of the House. And so the market at this moment is saying, we do not believe that EOS Energy can find the cash to bridge its way to closing the Department of Energy loan. And I'm saying, I think from these prices, despite the risk, that this stock could be a multi-multi-bagger 
two to three years from now. And the very first stock I want to own is EOS Energy. Now, if you're a listener of the No Limit podcast, you'll know about the torturous mental journey that EOS has taken Christoph on over the last six months. The guy is personally way, way overcommitted for my liking to a crazy ass company like this. But hey, I hope this works out for you in the King of the Jungle challenge. I hope it works out for me too, Luke. <laughs> uh, a, if you, if you nice turn your head to the left, right, there's a huge stack of whiskey behind you, I seem to recall. Like, let's see the whiskey. Yeah. So we'll judge the, uh, the level on those bottles uh, as, it, as it stays highly correlated with the declining EOS share price. <laughs> <laughs> it's a jungle out there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a long-term investor. I like the idea of being nearly fully invested. I'm going to buy, I'm deciding right now, five companies, a hundred bucks each to start my portfolio. I want to get some money in the game, but let's only talk about one of them this week. I'll reveal the other four over future weeks. So the one I'll reveal today is one of my own long-term holdings. It's my third highest position. It's one of the highest conviction stocks I've ever owned, frankly, and this company is CrowdStrike, ticker C-R-W-D. So if you haven't heard of CrowdStrike, you're probably not a CIO because the technical heads of virtually every business in the world, this is panic station number one. If you don't get your cybersecurity strategy right, you are in big, big trouble, buddy. MGM Group, the casino group, just last month had a ransomware attack against them. They lost $100 million, but even worse, their reputation was slammed. They had people in the casino because of this ransomware attack. They couldn't pay out chips. They had to write like IOUs. They had to shut down properties everywhere. Like this stuff is mission critical and reputation critical. So you've got to get your cybersecurity strategy right. And there are a ton of great cybersecurity companies out there, but my pick of the bunch is CrowdStrike. I own a couple of their competitors too but this is my biggest allocation. They are the leader in endpoint security. And like, I could talk about that for an hour, but I won't because it's a nice tight podcast. Trust me, this is really important stuff, but they're not just the endpoint leader. They're broadening their capabilities across the whole cybersecurity stack. Their CEO, George Kurtz, I think is a once in a generation leader. The guy founded the company and this is his life's work. And he's just doing a brilliant job of steering them to success. Like if I look at this in my own portfolio, go check out my Twitter. Uh, and I posted my purchase and sell history with this one. I'm actually only just breaking even like a month ago on my personal holdings. But this is the one. If I hold this for 10 years, I expect to make a significant return on. And this is low risk as far as I'm concerned. This stuff is mandatory. There's no getting away from the importance of cybersecurity. So that's the first of my five. I'll keep the other four secret. So this is a little weird, but your humble resident monkey is about to put on a bear suit. And now, now I'm going to put words in your mouth, Luke, but it's, it, it's pretty clear what the bear case against, against little old EOS is. <laughs> the bear, the, namely, that they might not have enough cash to be around six months from now. So, okay, even though I actually think the probabilities of that are quite low, it's more about how much... Uh, dilution investors will have to suffer. So I'm overstating the case. I don't think I would ever pick a company that would generally uh, be at risk for bankruptcy. However, so the bear case uh, against EOS is is simple. I think there's something that you might be overlooking, and I don't disagree about the quality of the business. It's it's top notch, and like you said, it's absolutely mandatory. It has recurring revenue. However, the point of investing is not just to pick great businesses, it's also to make money. And despite the greatness of the business, I have uh, questions about its valuation, given the fact that the current macro environment could really turn and any stocks that are still richly valued have a long way to fall. So comparatively, EOS from these levels uh, it's no longer trading on fundamentals because it's not valuing any future cash flows whatsoever. It's just the market's betting it's not going to exist versus it will. Whereas CrowdStrike, my goodness, what a great business. But uh, if the macro breaks, 
could it could it drop 20% absolutely 30% maybe 40% unlikely but possible so it's tough arguing against for me hearing myself argue against the company i truly respect and admire and like you think will ultimately succeed but like you better script out that rebuttal because you can be saying the same thing about all five of my picks they are all overvalued um, based on rational uh, short-term thinking. I'm a long-term investor, though. If I have to come and serve you dinner because these high-quality companies got hit over the one-year time frame, I'll suck it up. But over the long term, these quality companies are going to kick the ass of your crazy shit. <laughs> I'm not only going to have crazy shit, by the way. <laughs> I'm just starting out with 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 uh, the unsavory side of of the jungle. That's all. That's all. <laughs> cool. Well, hopefully, this was a fun and entertaining first episode and gave you a taster of the kind of stuff we'll be talking about on Wall Street Wildlife. You can find us on YouTube. We've got a website, WallStreetWildlife.com. And we're going to be on all the major podcasting platforms. Like if you listen to this, if you like it, I don't know, like and subscribe, whatever the kids say, and catch our future episodes as they launch. We're hoping to drop at least one a week, maybe more if crazy stuff happens in the jungle. That's right. There's some bells, right, on YouTube. you got to click a bell and a like or whatever. And on X slash Twitter, we are seven flying platypus. That's me. And at seven Luke Hallard. You got it. Go follow us. And if you've got some feedback, some comments, maybe you've got like a potential dodo for us to check out, give us a tweet, let us know, and we'll stick it on our roster of crazy companies to take a look at. That's right. All questions are welcome. We want to make this as interactive and participatory as we can. We're here to learn. We're here to teach. We're here to have fun and make lots and lots of bananas. Because remember, friends, there's always money in the banana stand. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to become a beast of an investor? Your story starts here. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs>